This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. All right. So, God has ordained work. God wants you to work. It's what he wants out of your life. So how do you become the best employer or employee ever? How do you become the best employee at your place of business or the best employer, the best boss? We're going to take a look at a passage of scripture here that is actually Jesus teaching about preparing for the end times. But uh, within the context of the story, we find some really some wonderful nuggets of right and wrong employer employee actions. And we see some things in the context of the cultural norms for work of that day. And we begin to see some things that we can take and apply in this context. So we're taking a passage that really deals with a completely different issue, but we're drawing some insights about employer employee relations. And it's in Matthew chapter 25, beginning with verse 14. Matthew chapter 25, beginning with verse 14. Let me read it for you. And if you have your Bibles, you might want to open to that because we're going to camp here for a few minutes. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents of money, to another, two talents, and to another, one talent, and to another, one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I've gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. By the way, I can't help but believe that in the true context of how this passage is written, that that is a, a very uh, important insight that God is saying, I am preparing you to share greater things and to put you in charge of many things, of greater things. Little side note there. Verse 22, the man with two talents also came. The master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you're a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Talk about blowing smoke. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Whatever that means. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with a banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him. Give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more. And he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. In other words, he didn't handle it right. He didn't do well. And then look what verse 30 says. And throw that worthless servant out. Now, let's take a look from the, within this passage, drawing some conclusions. What makes a good employee? And then later we're going to, happy anniversary, you guys. Save some, some dessert for us. What makes a good employee? Well, first, in verse 14, we see that a good employee can be trusted with the employer's assets. An employer knows who he can trust, or at least hopes he knows whom, whom he can trust. And so a good employee is one who can be trusted with employer's assets. Secondly, a good employee works within his or her abilities. You see, he said the, the, the passage says he knew what their abilities were. The employer knew what the abilities were. And he was asking them to work within their abilities, not less and not more. It's important, I believe, for every employee to make his or her abilities clear to his or her employer. They should know what your abilities are. 
if there are, are things that you're able to do that they don't know about, you need to make sure that they know that you can do these things. Not so much so that you can just come on, give me another job or give me a better job or something like that, but just say, I'm available and I like doing this, I'm able to do this, just so that you know. A good employee understands his or her value to the company. It's important to understand that you have value. The company hired you because you have value for the company. And you need to know that you have certain value to the company. And you should know what it is. A good employee understands that uh, where he or she fits into the order of responsibilities. What are your responsibilities? How do you fit into that pecking order? What are your jobs and your responsibilities? How do you fit into that structure? What are the things that are expected of you and the things that are not expected of you because they're expected of someone else? In other words, do your job. A good employee responds immediately to tasks. Number three. A good employer responds immediately to tasks. Verse 16 says that, that, the, uh, that the, the, the two uh, employees, the first and the second one, immediately went out. It says they immediately went out and went to work with what their boss had entrusted them with. A good employee responds immediately to tasks. Verse 16. Then a good employee is ready to give account for his or her accomplishments for the company. Verse 20. You see, you are expected to give account for what you do. Somehow or other, you are expected to give account for what you do. And a good employee is ready to give account. This is what I've accomplished. This is what I can say I've done. This is why I am the value that I am to this company. A good employee assumes responsibility for his own actions. He doesn't blame others for his or her failure. I thought it was interesting that the, the third employee here, he blamed the boss. I knew you were a really tough guy, you know, like, you know, things grow where you don't plan them because you're so mean, you know, and you're just such a harsh taskmaster. And I just know what a, what a hard boss you've been. The guy's been gone now for who knows how long. He left them on his own to get the work done. How difficult was that? I know you're a really hard guy, and he blames the boss. I just thought that was amazing. A good employee doesn't blame others for his or her failure, which by the way means that sometimes there will be failure. Sometimes there will be failure in your life, but you don't blame others for it. Put the blame where it belongs. A good employee doesn't operate out of fear. I was afraid, the third employee said, I don't operate out of fear. Why? You've heard me say it before, when you operate out of fear, you make bad choices. You make mistakes. A good employee doesn't make excuses for inadequacy doesn't make excuses for inadequacy. Well, you know, I'd like to, but you know, just things are really, you know, complicated right now in my life, and you know, oh, please. A good employee doesn't, doesn't make excuses for inadequacy. And then finally, a good employee is a problem solver. Verses 26 and 27. A good employee is a problem solver. Here's the problem, here's the solution. I had a boss, and he was one of my favorite bosses in radio one time, who used to always say, I don't care if you bring a problem to my attention, but bring a solution when you do. And that's the way he operated. If you walked into his office and said, na 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 we got a problem here, na 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 and you didn't have a solution, you were in trouble. You were in real trouble. His whole approach was that I want you to be proactive. This company belongs to its employees. You are part of this company. And so that means that you need to be a problem solver. If you discover a problem, find a solution. If you can't find a solution, let me know right up front. But he said, I want problem solvers in this company. I loved working for him, loved working for him because it, it opened up opportunities for me to, to express what I felt or where I felt the company needed to go. I became part of the company. So,